Hi there, this is uh, Johan Lundgren, CEO of EasyJet, and I'm joined here today by Kempton Jarvis, our CFO. In this video today, I'm going to give you an update on EasyJet's new ambitious medium-term targets, which are built on a strategic position as Europe's largest airline at primary airport. I will also take you through the key levers that will enable us to achieve the ambition that we have to deliver over 1 billion pounds of PBT. Kenton will then talk you through our capital allocation framework, which underpins our decision-making process to deliver attractive shareholder returns. We have set out our medium-term targets and provided the building blocks to deliver this. We believe these targets are both ambitious and credible. We have been relentlessly focused on ensuring that this business is capable of being structurally more profitable than ever before. My ambition is to deliver at least one billion pounds of profit before tax. Today, we're setting out how we will achieve this. We're targeting a seven to 10 pounds group profit per seat. And today we achieved just under five pounds, but we have clear levers that will deliver this target. And the key areas of focus are reducing winter losses through unlocking productivity and utilization gains for pilots, cabin crew, and aircraft alongside leveraging and building our primary airport network. Upgaging. This will enable us to grow passenger numbers at slot constrained airports whilst reducing our fuel burn and unlocking other efficiencies throughout our cost base. And this is a benefit that no other airline has in the next five years and it will deliver us a cost saving of over three pounds per seat. EasyJet Holidays has been hugely successful to date. Not only is it the fastest growing holidays business in the UK, but it's also a market leader in its margin generation. There's plenty of growth still to go for this business. And we will continue to grow our share in the UK market, going from 5% to over 10% alongside profit generation from new source markets. And this will drive delivery of a new target for holidays of profit before tax in excess of 250 million. We're also focused on driving returns within our primary airport network with route progression, in-flight retail, continued revenue management enhancements and ancillaries whilst also improving our leading cost position at the primary airport. We're focused on execution of the core levers which will drive EasyJet to be structurally more profitable than it has ever been before. If we focus on delivering our group PBT per seat target, the output will be delivering our high teen ROKI target, which is far in excess of our cost of capital. Finally, we are also focused on disciplined profitable growth. We are targeting a circa 5% CAGR to 2028, and this will be delivered by our current aircraft order book through absolute aircraft increases to the fleet and upgaging. And as we move into full year 24, this growth will come from building in the UK regions, including the opening of a base in Birmingham, a new seasonal base in Alicante, and growth also into Switzerland. I'll now hand over to Kenton to talk you through our capital allocation framework. Thank you, Johan. Capital allocation is a key part of our decision-making process as we look to create long-term shareholder value. I'll now talk you through our capital allocation framework and how I see EasyJet's capital discipline and structure alongside the key metrics we are focused on in order to maximize shareholder returns. We're very focused on capital discipline and on driving greater returns from our existing capital employed, our fleet. We do this by constantly optimizing the network to allocate aircraft to the highest returning bases and routes and by maximizing revenue streams from our ancillary product offering and from the low risk, low capital expansion of EasyJet holidays. Our low cost model means we always seek to maximize aircraft utilization and maintain fleet flexibility. We're already very efficient in the summer, given the network we have, but we see an opportunity to improve efficiency through the winter period and in the shoulder months. I expect the planned capacity increases this coming winter to help deliver a further 10% improvement in aircraft utilization year on year. This, along with improvements in cockpit and crew productivity, will help reduce winter losses going forward. We have ability within our fleet to grow at a CAGR of around 5% over the next five years. However, we will be disciplined and have the flexibility to ramp this up or down, depending on the economic environment and also the opportunities we see within our primary slot constrained network. 
Our investment in the Airbus NEO order book will allow us to modernise the fleet, driving substantial fuel and carbon efficiencies alongside upgaging benefits. Now moving on to our capital structure. During 2023, we've made significant progress, reducing gross debt by £1.2 billion. We will be further deleveraging this month as we have a 500 million euro bond, which is about to mature. And this will be paid down through our cash holdings. Our strong investment grade balance sheet gives us a platform to invest in profitable growth, whilst retaining enough liquidity to withstand any industry shocks. We currently have 4.7 billion of liquidity, which is well in excess of our policy to hold customer monies, plus a 500 million pound buffer. We own 74% of the NEO aircraft in our fleet, and this is the key metric to focus on, as the value in the fleet going forward will sit within the NEO aircraft type. And that's why we'll continue to build the ownership percentage of these aircraft, with all the fully 24 deliveries to be taken direct into ownership, further strengthening EasyJet's balance sheet. So maintaining both capital discipline and the right capital structure will enable us to drive industry-leading returns from our capital employed and therefore create value for our shareholders. Today we're also announcing that the board intends to reinstate a dividend effective for the year ending 30th September 2023 with a payout ratio of 10% of headline profit after tax. It's the expectation that this will rise to 20% in the 2024 financial year. The board will continue to review this over the coming years, where we believe there is scope to further increase this, depending on the progress we make towards delivering the new medium-term targets, our CapEx funding requirements, and the wider economic environment. Thank you for watching.